Hey guys, Bittersteel here, back with another video, and we are taking another look at the Dev Diaries. And yes, I know I missed last week's Dev Diary. I love trains, but I'm a very, very busy man. Didn't have the time to check it out. It was a short one. I recommend you check it out if you haven't. Uh, it's all about how the supply system is going to work and how trains play a part in that. But enough about last week, on to this week, and oh boy, do I love this one. Railway guns. That's right. We are diving deeper into the concept of the railway gun. And first off, they are letting us know just how we can get our hands on them. We're going to do some research. So obviously you'll have to research normal trains. Then you'll want to research armored trains. And after that come the railway guns. And I guess it's only fair that you need to do a little bit of research to get your hands on those big behemoths. But researching is only part of the equation. If we scroll down here, we'll find out just how we can make these. And they are going to be remarkably like ships. They'll be listed in the equipment tab or military equipment. You'll assign factories to them, but you can only assign a maximum of five military factories to making railway guns. Just like with ships, five dockyards for a capital ship. Same here with railway guns. Not only are you limited in the way that you can assign factories, you can also choose the amount of railway guns those factories make, either an infinite number or or like one, two, three, etc. So this is pretty much just the concept of building ships ported over to the military factory side of things. Um, I guess it's okay. I don't really understand why you're limiting it that much other than to balance things, because if you're just gonna crap out railway guns, I assume the French are gonna have a bad time in the Maginot. And once your lovely little railway gun is built, it's going to appear in your capital. Um, pretty much the same way that a ship would appear in port. Y you don't get to add it to your equipment, you don't need to train it, you don't need to recruit it, it just appears when it's built and it deploys in your capital because the capital is the hub of the railway system. Obviously, railway guns are going to be tied to the railway networks. If the gun wants to go somewhere, it's gonna need a railway connection. So if you have a very mobile front, maybe railway guns aren't really gonna do you much good since, well, it's very likely that the rail network is going to be damaged or unusable for the time being, and that makes railway guns a little less beneficial, let's say. They are going to be pretty nice for those big prepared offensives, at least the opening salvos. And just like airplanes, you will be able to assign them to an army. I, I see a horse icon here, which I assume is uh, some sort of supply attachment group as well. And then the railway icon that allows you to assign the railway gun to that army. And I, I assume it's going to try and follow that army as best it can along existing railroads. I, I also see a little a little icon here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, on that cavalry template there in the, the middle of that army, I don't know what that yellowish icon is. I am, I am interested. I am intrigued. Anyway, on to the railway guns themselves. They will sit on the railway system in locations that, well, I guess make sense. It will try to get as close to the front as possible to provide support to the army it's assigned to, or well, it's gonna sit wherever you park it. When it's in position, it will uh, display this nice big circle around it, indicating just how much range the artillery has. It's not massive, but it's something and it will be able to support combat in tiles surrounding it. So every tile that is within the circle will be able to receive artillery support. Though the way I understand this to be is if there's one combat going on, one railway gun can support that combat. If there's two battles going on, the railway gun is gonna have to choose which it supports. At least that's how I think it works. They're not very clear on that. It, it would make sense that you can only, you know, fire shells at one thing at a time, effectively. Now, as for the actual combat, uh, it's going to work very similar to how shore bombardment works now, by uh, you park your capital ships on a sea tile next to land combat, 
and they will provide a debuff to the party that, well, do doesn't have a ship backing it up. So it will hamper its organization, its attack, its defense, its etc. And to make sure that you are very aware of the artillery bombardment happening, they've changed the icon a bit. As you can see on this red bubble, I don't know if you can see this. Let me let me zoom in there. Oh yeah, big zoom. As you can see on that red bubble here, there are some uh, artillery shells falling down to indicate that, yes, there is a bombardment assisting you. And as you can see in the combat window itself, that same icon pops up for the, well, receiving end of the artillery barrage, I guess. And uh, it will apply a modifier very similar to how, um, very similar to how short bombardment works. Like I said, it's going to apply a flat debuff to a variety of stats. I'm not sure if these numbers are fixed i think all of this is still placeholder but a 15 percent reduction in defense for instance is uh not bad and then finally we will be able to capture or lose railway guns that's right you will be able to take the enemy's schwerer gustav away from him if you manage to encircle the artillery piece and then destroy the pocket you will capture the railway gun which is going to make for an interesting game because i plan to go collecting if that's a thing i, I just want to finish the game with every historical railway gun in my possession that will be very cool Oh, and railway guns can also be damaged by damaging the railway they are parked on. So if I'm not mistaken, bombers will have the option of specifically targeting railways and trains. And that leads me to believe that that is going to be the most effective way of neutralizing enemy railway guns, uh, short of breaking through with fast units and encircling them. So yeah, I am looking forward to wielding these massive guns in my future games. And included are a few artillery pieces of historical significance. This is apparently a relatively accurate rendition of the British BL 9.2 inch railway gun, a relic of the first war, but it was kept in service until 1945. Followed by the French Canon de 305, another veteran of the first world war. Next up we have the USA's 8 inch Mark 5, no Mark 6, which remarkably entered service as late as 1941. Just imagine 1941, the world has moved away from its trench warfare in its all about speed, mobility and air power and what does the US do? Let's build a bigger gun. Oh well. Then there's the Japanese, um, the Type 90 240mm railway gun which was destroyed by the Russians. No wait, destroyed by the Japanese as they were running away from the Russians in Manchuria. And the glorious Soviet TM-312, of which three were made in 1938 and they were used in the Winter War against Finland. Poorly. And these actually remained in service until 1999. So these grandfathers got around. They got around indeed. Oh, and I almost missed it way at the top here. This is the big boy. This is the one we all know and love. The German Schwerer Gustav. Yeah. The most famous of railway guns. And this is the bad boy that shelled Paris, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Am I mistaken? If I'm mistaken, let me know in the comments. And of course, they've uh, modeled these guns actually firing. And as a final tidbit to send us off, they, they give us this little rendition of Schwerer Gustav opening fire and letting its big guns roar. Very nice, Germany. Very nice. Anyway, that was a quick look at this very short dev diary. And the way the dev diaries keep getting shorter, I hope to God that we are getting close to a release. I am stoked for No Step Back. This is the DLC I've been looking forward to the most. It is going to be either amazingly great or incredibly disappointing at this point. I, I cannot wait to find out. At any rate, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing and check out that bell icon. If you hit it, you will get notified whenever I upload more content unless YouTube breaks again. If you didn't like it, that's fine. Just hit that dislike button and tell me what I did wrong in the comments. Always looking to learn. And if you want to support the channel and support what I do, consider checking out the YouTube membership. It's that join button down there next to the subscribe button. That will take you to the YouTube membership page. It has all the information you need. This has been me, Bittersteel, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.